here we're going to see how to combine data from CRISP and from FRED for use in Echo 204 finance projects. So I have already gone to CRISP and downloaded Dell's price returns and returns value dividends from June 30th, 1988 all the way to, you can see, December 30, 2011. Now CRISP will always give you data on the last day of each month. Let's now go download some S&P 500 data from FRED. I type in S&P 500. And the third line I'll type in M for monthly. Go to FRED data. And it now downloads S&P 500 index data from the first day it was in existence, which is January 1st, 57, all the way to last month. Notice that unlike CRISP, in CRISP the data is always on the last day of each month. In FRED, the data is always on the first day of each month. This is something to keep in mind. I will now download data for Treasury bills, US Treasury bills. So here what you have is TB3MS, Treasury bills 3 month series, on a monthly basis. Press Get FRED Data. And now you will notice it's a different time series starts in January 1st, 1934. So what we want to do is we want to combine the Treasury Bills series with the S&P 500 series with the Dell series. So here's what we can do. Let's copy, let's actually call this S&P 500. And let's copy the date, so Control, press the Shift key, right arrow. And without letting go, down arrow. This allows you to then move around without using a mouse and I'm now going to paste this over here. In the same way I'll now go to my Dell data, highlight the first date, actually sorry date, price, all the stuff, now copy and then I go back and paste over here. So now what we have to do is, let's insert some rows, sorry columns, and now what I'm going to do is, this is the date, this is the Treasury Bills 3 month series. This is now S&P 500 series. And this is now Dell's price, let's say. So what I'll do is I'll use the VLOOKUP function. Now notice that, once again, if you've forgotten a VLOOKUP, then you, you tell Excel to look for dates, let's say January 1st, 1934, in some other table, and then pull out some numbers. So here's how we do it. This is the look of value. I want to look up by date. We want to first start by looking for S&P 500. So that's the data over here. Remember the first column has to be in ascending order. Highlight this entire table. Press F4 to make it absolute. Now within this it tells me look for January 1st 1934 in this table that you see over here. Which number am I pulling out? I'm pulling out the number in, in the second column and now I can use false, which is an exact match. False will work here because both series will always start in the first day of each month. So we do that. You don't see an answer here because the S&P 500 did not exist in 1934. But if I copy this formula down, here you notice that on January 1st, 57, S&P 500 was 45.4. Let's see if you get that same value down here. Go to January 1st, 1950. 7 right here and you notice it's 45.4 so it's working. Now let's actually pull in Dell's price. Once again we do the lookup. We look by date, comma. This time I highlight this entire matrix, let's say the date, price, returns, returns without dividends, highlight them, press F4. At this point what I want is Dell's price, so for this date it wants to look for Dell's price. Best price is in the second column, so I say 2 here. But let's see what would actually happen if I now said false. False means that I try to look for exact matches. And that's going to run into a problem because this data does not have the first day of each month, it has the last of each month. So you will never find a match. But let's see what happens over here. So I say enter. And even if I copy the formula down, you will notice that when I go to 1988 or any times, any date whatsoever, I don't find Dell's prices. So this means that what we have to do is, rather than look for exact matches, we look for approximate matches. So go back to the first cell, change false to true, 
copy the formula down again and then you will now notice that when I get to 1988 you will then start to see prices for Dell right here right so you can see that in fact that's true on July 1st 1988 the Dell's price was 9.4 because on the last day of June the price of Dell was as you can see right here 9.4